Despite the Mavic 2 being aimed more at the consumer market, it's fast become a prosumer and commercial operated drone for all sorts of industrial applications. You don't really need a folding drone for this type of work, but the camera quality, the proximity sensors, and the way it flies makes it more than capable. It's just about everything you need for inspections, surveys, and 3D modeling. And it's easy to transport. You can be up and flying really quickly, and it's light, so if the unexpected happens, it's not gonna be too destructive. And importantly for roof inspections, particularly urban roof inspections, it's very quiet and stealthy. So as a commercial tool, it's surprisingly good, but it's got one big drawback. You can't fly in ATI mode. Today, I'll show you how to configure it so you can. Welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Yep, I've been using my Mavic 2 for lots of inspection work over the last year. The fact that it's very quiet means it's stealthy and I'm less likely to get bothered by people when I'm out on a job. Now, on some commercial jobs, I operate under an OSC or an operational safety case that allows me to fly pretty close to buildings, people and anything that's not directly under my control. It's a very strict set of conditions and operating procedures that have got to be followed. If you're working in urban areas doing inspections and surveys, it's the only way to operate legally. And although this Mavic is ideal for some of that work, it doesn't have ATI mode. I guess DJI see that as something hobbyists and consumers could struggle with, and it's not available on any of their lower end products. But for experienced pilots, ATI mode really is a safety net. Attitude mode simply turns off the GPS positioning, but the drone is still stabilized. If you take your fingers off the sticks, whilst it's moving forward, it'll just keep going. It'll maintain its height and direction, but it's free to wander about. And it's always been available on the Phantom, Inspire, Matrice, and other prosumer enterprise drones. You need a pretty good level of experience to fly well in ATI mode, because you have to be in control all the time. If you take your eyes off it, you could have drifted off with the wind into the trees. So, this all sounds like a negative, and for casual pilots it is, but there's loads of reasons why it's a plus if you know what you're doing. So, if GPS goes crazy in a built-up urban area because of interference or multipath reflections, the drone can just fly off or you have seemingly no control. If you switch it to ATI mode, you can get back and fly safely to where you landed. There's no big, faulty GPS hand trying to push you somewhere you don't want to go. And if you want awesome, smooth, flowing, cinematic shots, especially if you're tracking cars and boats, particularly fast cars and boats, ATI mode is the way to go. You don't get nasty jerking motion when you take your fingers off the sticks. Most professional aerial cinematic pilots will use the equivalent of ATI mode. And I'm sure you've all seen the warning, High wind, fly with caution, and in line of sight, appear on your controller from time to time. It's just telling you that the drone is having a struggle maintaining the position the GPS wants to keep it in, because the wind is blowing it around. It's trying to sit here, the wind's blowing it that way, and it's really struggling. And I expect you've often thought, but the wind down here is fine. Why has it got this warning? Well, it's simple. There's a thing called wind gradient. The wind is generally slower at ground level than it is higher up. There's less ground resistance as you get higher, so the higher the altitude, the higher the wind speed. And as a rule of thumb, I assume the wind will be about double at 400 feet what it is at ground level, and you just have to take that into account. But if you get that warning and you flip the drone into ATI mode, and you need to be really ready for it, it will drift off in the wind. 
and you immediately get a feel for how strong the wind is at the altitude you're flying. That's why the first thing you should do if your drone is struggling and you get that message is reduce height fast because the wind will be generally at a slower speed nearer the ground. So how do you enable ATI mode on the Mavic 2? Now this isn't really a hack, it's more of an undocumented feature in the DJI Assistant desktop application. First, you're gonna need to get hold of version 1.1.2 of the Assistant and install it. Now this is an older version and it only works on 1.1.2. Check the description for some download links. If you already have the latest version installed, I suggest you rename it because you don't want to overwrite it with an older version. And there's no reason why you can't have multiple versions installed. So fire up the assistant and check that you're running version 1.1.2. It's down in the right hand corner here. Take the props off your Mavic and plug it into the PC with the USB cable. And when you're ready, just turn your Mavic on. Here we go, there we go, excellent. Now, if you're on a Mac, press Option Command I, or on Windows, press Control Shift I to display the inspector window. Now you'll see there's a whole load of tabs across the right hand side here. You need to select Resources if you're on a Mac, or, or Application if you're on a Windows machine. Select Local Storage and File and what you need to do is change this debug key, you need to change the value to a one. Just double click it, press one and hit return. And you need to change debug enabled to true. So double click the value, type in true and hit return. Now these won't remain once you quit the app. These will default back to the original values of zero and false. You can now close the inspector window. That's all good. Now, if you double click the Mavic icon, you'll see there's a whole bunch of new items in the menu down here. Get rid of that. And what we want is parameters. So we need to find a few settings which are to do with the switch. So type in mode here and search for it. So here we go, F switch selection, naught one and two. So naught is the tripod position of the switch two is position or GPS and one is sport. What you need to do is make the tripod switch position become ATI mode. So if you double click this value here and change it from a 12 to a three and hit return, that's it. We have basically hijacked the tripod switch position and substituted ATI mode. You could have done the same with the sport position switch down here, but I think that's a really useful one to keep. And I rarely use tripod mode anyway. So you can now just quit out of that and you're done. Okay, so now we're ready to test it out and I highly recommend you try this indoors with the props off to make sure nothing's gone wrong. Fire up the Mavic as normal and make sure you've got GPS or P mode selected. And you can see here, we've got position, which is great. Although it says ready to go vision, that's because we're indoors and we've only got seven satellites. Surprisingly, it's seven. Okay, so we flick this into sport mode. There we go, we can see sport mode at the top there, which is great. Put it into tripod mode and well, hey, there we go. We are in ATI mode, no positioning, ATI. Excellent, so it's worked. So is this all a hack? Well, not really. It's what DJI used to configure the default settings for their drones. So why can you only do this with version 1.1.2 of the DJI Assistant? Well, this app is actually written using Electron JS. So although it looks like a native desktop app on Windows or Mac, it's actually a web browser running inside a native container. So this bit in here is a web browser. By default, you can access the browser inspector window, which allows us to turn on debug mode like this. And this is what DJI developers and testers use to debug, tweak and configure things. 
In version 1.1.2, they forgot to disable developer tools in the build, and that's why the inspector window is accessible. And in later versions, they just locked it down. If you want to know what the other switch setting parameter values are, I've listed them in the description below. But bear in mind, DJI may change these, so don't rely on them without checking first. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please do the subscribing bell thing up here to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you next time.